This is the new Mercedes GLS, and according to Mercedes, it's the S-Class of SUVs. But is it really? Well, I'm gonna try and find out in this video by driving it on road. Yeah. Taking it off road. Whoa! Seeing how spacious it is. Whoa! Here we are. Trying out its technology. Yes, it's working. Taking it to the car wash. Using it to park a big trailer. No sake. Making it dance. Yeah! And of course, poking it with a stick. We have some real exhaust in there. Now guys, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our reviews and hit that bell icon so you're alerted when we make a new upload. For a change, I'm gonna start this review by taking the new Mercedes GLS off-road. So this one is fitted with the upgraded off-road pack, so I've got some underbody protection. I've also got a low range mode. I'm about to go down a steep descent. I'm not actually gonna use low range mode for this, but what I am gonna do is put the car into off-road plus mode. I'm also gonna raise up the air suspension, and I can actually start a little game that is built into the car's infotainment system, which will basically grade my ability to drive off-road. So, start that up. So, we've got hill descent control, and it's slowing the car down. Now, as standard, this model comes with air suspension, but you can upgrade it with something called E-Active Body Control. And it's a bit like what you had in the S-Class where it can monitor the road ahead and it uses a camera just up there to do that and sensors in the body as well to know what the wheels are doing. And it can alter each wheel individually and it figures out... Whoa! I'm getting close to some bushes. So the car figures out what to do with the suspension to maximise traction at each wheel. What is remarkable is how comfy this is. Normally when you're off-roading, you're getting shaken around like this, but because you've got that system fitted to the car, it's working out what to do with the suspension, that it's just levelling it off and basically just walking me, a bit like a cat, down this steep hill. Now I'm getting some comments here on the screen saying, do not brake when descent control is operational, so I can just let the car do it. I was feathering the brakes, so I'll stop that and do as I'm told. Apparently the best any journalist has done down here is 70 points and I'm on 28. <laughs> I think I've got some way to go. So I'm being told now to steadily accelerate during axle articulation because this is going to really test the car now because this is very tricky. So I should accelerate slowly, apparently. The car's actually braking. And it's time to accelerate more steadily. I can't do it more steadily, car. <laughs> So now it's getting pretty tricky. I'm going to take the car up into level three. So here we go. Whoa! Oh my God. This is tricky stuff, this is. Steady acceleration. No, I'm not accelerating down here, mate. Couple of big bangs there as I just dropped off a rock. So finally I'm reaching the finish line. See what my score is. 41 out of 100, which is sort of could do better, but not totally terrible. Now I should point out to you guys that when I went over that big bang, whoa, it shocked the car's suspension system. And so it's thrown up a malfunction. Now the car probably isn't broken, but it just needs to check all its sensors to make sure that everything's fine. And to do that, I have to turn it off and on again. And if when I turn it on again, it's still showing, then I've damaged the car. So let's find out. Come on, I hope I haven't broken it, because it's going to cost me a lot of money. Aha! Thankfully, the car is all right. <laughs> we can get on with the journey. Okay, so now the track's levelling out a bit. I'm going to lower the air suspension into setting one, which means that I can go above 12 miles an hour. Actually, do you know what? Let's see what it's like being in the back seat when you're going off-road. I'm just going to hop into the back then. Right, so here we are, back seats of the new GLS. Well, I say back seats, it's the middle row because of course it has three rows as standard. This is a six seater version, so we've got individual chairs, which I quite like because you have these armrests. Now I have the car in its fully relaxed position, so seat as reclined as I can have it, as far back as I can have it as well. And yes, there is loads of room. We're driving off road and it feels suitably comfortable. Once again, that e-active body control, using that camera, looking at undulations in the road, and just smoothing things out. In fact, it feels like I'm on a normal road. And if you want to see the difference, 
that it has having this e-active body control. I'm going to show you a little cutaway now where you can see one car with it and one car without it going over undulations. It really is quite incredible. What's it like though in the very back of this car? Well, I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to move my seat into the fully forward position. Oh, it's pretty hard to do because of the seat belt is not happy. Okay, so that's fully forward. I'll put it upright a little bit. Now this is still really spacious and comfy. Let's see what it's like back there. Bear with me. Oh, here we are. Just pop this up. So Mercedes has tried to make this car as roomy in the back as possible. And people over six foot will be okay in the very back. And the floor is fairly flat as well. I should probably put my seatbelt on actually. <laughs> you have the largest panoramic glass roof fitted to any production car, apparently. There is one small complaint I have though. In a BMW X7, you have an extra portion here, which does make it feel a bit light in the very back of the BMW. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the X7, just click up there on the pop-out banner to watch that video review. But I must say it's quite comfy back here. And we've got some mod cons such as we've got two USB charging points there, another two over the other side. In fact, in total, this car has 11 USB charging points. So enough for everyone to charge their mobile devices. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, this is a six seater. I thought the GLS was a seven seater. Well, it is, you can get it with seven seats as well. And if you get the seven seater version, you can upgrade it to have a special rear infotainment package where you have a tablet in the center armrest, which allows you to control various features on the car. You can even control the massage function of the middle row of seats if you have that fitted as well. So it's all super, super comfortable. And that's what Mercedes is about, comfort. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Hell yeah, I want that e-active body control fitted to my GLS. There is one problem though. It costs around £7,000, which is a lot of money. But then it does include some serious componentry. So you basically have the normal air suspension there, but then it adds a separate chamber here and then you have a special electrically controlled pump and what that can do is pump oil or remove it from that chamber which effectively moves the wheel up and down and of course you have that on each corner hence the cost one of my favorite things about the e-active body control you can make it do a little dance so if i put it into individual wheel control i can actually move each wheel up and down as i like to make the car rock about the idea is, is that you can use this when you're off road to help free you if you're stuck. Also, if you really are stuck, say in sand, you can make it jump up and down on the spot so it kind of gets jiggy with it. Yeah. If the GLS is a rocking, you can actually come knocking because it's just bouncing up and down on its suspension trying to get free. Nothing untoward happening at all, no. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> it's like the rodeo! <laughs> right then, let's talk about the design because this thing is absolutely massive. It's even bigger than a BMW X7. So it's over 5.2 meters long and it's taller and wider than the previous GLS. And it's certainly imposing, but I just need to go and get something. Yes, an American rustic car wow stick of truth. So I want to check for fake vents. These are real there, they're real there, but we have some fakery down here. Now we'll move to the back and as we do, you'll notice this thing's riding on 23 inch alloy wheels. The wheel sizes actually start at 19s and when you see the 19s, they look diddy compared to these 23s. Big question is though at the back, have we got some fake exhaust? So, uh, well, we've got a fake surround, but at least in here on this particular V8 petrol model, we have some real exhaust in there. Now on the diesel model, they're completely fake. And apparently there's a little bit of an internal argument going on within Mercedes. Some people want them to scrap the fake exhaust, whereas others want to continue. Now, why don't you send a message to them? So click on the pop-out banner up there on the top right-hand corner of the screen to vote if you think they should just scrap the fake exhaust and I'll pass the results on to Mercedes. This GLS is absolutely packed full of kit to help make your life as easy as possible. So I've got the augmented reality sat now. I'm approaching a junction, and rather than just telling me left or right on the screen, it's gonna flip up a little live feed from a camera just up there, and then it's gonna superimpose directions over it, and it's telling me to turn right with the graphic on the screen. So I cannot get it wrong, unless I'm a total moron. Yeah, 
no comments about that. Thank you, guys. This particular car is also fitted with the Driving Assistance Plus package. So that includes a clever cruise control system. So it's using radar and cameras to keep me a safe distance from a car in front. It's also hooking me up to the middle of the lane and steering. Now you shouldn't actually do this with your hands off, but I need to illustrate it to you guys. It's the only way I can do it. That's my disclaimer. Don't do it yourself at home. Now this system actually has another feature. So I've got a slow moving lorry in front of me. And if I put the indicator on, the car will use its sensors to check that the lane is clear next to me and it's gonna take me round that slow lorry. So it's really cool that it'll actually change lanes itself. Also, what it'll do is when you approach a turn, it knows that you're doing that because of the satellite navigation and it automatically slows you down. That's clever, but I've seen that before on other Mercs. What this car has that's new though, is the fact that it can actually use the traffic data and it can tell if you're approaching a traffic jam. And then what it will do is actually slow you down even before you see the jam itself. So there's none of that sudden braking that you sometimes get with these systems. So it just makes it all very comfortable and relaxing. So let it change lane again itself because why should I have to bother, eh? Mercedes has fitted something new to this car called car wash mode. And I'll demonstrate it now by going through a car wash. So driving a big vehicle through this would be a bit tricky. But what I can do is just hit this button on here to put the car into car wash mode. Now what that's gonna do is fold in the mirrors. If you're in a European car, it'll shut the sunroof and the windows. It's not allowed to in the US for some legal reasons. It'll also raise the car up on its air suspension. And what that does is move the wheels in slightly by about two centimeters, which can be the difference between scraped alloys and not scraped alloys when you're trying to fit between the two metal rails of the car wash. Also, it puts the air conditioning into recirculation mode. It turns off the rain sensing wipers. So you should be all good to go. So here we go. The parking sensors are off, so you don't get the beeps, but you still have the camera helping you out. I've never really done a review in a car wash before, but there's a first time for everything, isn't there? <laughs> now, this is a good time to talk through the interior design of this car. So it's exactly the same, the dashes, as in the GLE. So it's quite a nice layout. Two huge, beautiful screens as standard. The infotainment system is really good as well. And you can control it, button on the steering wheel or the touchpad down here, all via voice commands. The problem is, is that in parts, it feels a little bit cheap. So the switches here, a bit cheap. The scratchy plastics down there. The parking brake is horrible. You know, this is supposed to be the S-Class of SUVs, but quality wise, yeah, it doesn't feel S-Class E enough, does it really? And this thing starts from 74,000 pounds. So if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can go to Carway to see how much money you can save on a new car through our trusted dealers. Anyway, <laughs> now if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure you do and come and join the Carwire family. That's all done. Made it through, no curved wheels, absolutely fine. All I've got to do now is stop car wash mode and it'll put everything back to normal. You can get the GLS with Mercedes new trailer assist. Now I had a go at parking this seven meter long boat in a parking bay over there without using it and I was rubbish. That way? No, that way? I've got this so wrong. Oh shit. No sake. However, I'm now gonna do it with the trailer assist. So first thing I do is put it into reverse. Press this button down there to engage trailer assist. I'm gonna press that button to make the trailer go dead straight on that heading. The car will do the steering, I do the throttle and the brakes. It's actually quite hard to make a trailer go straight back. So in this case, it's dead easy. Now I'm gonna move it to that setting so I can change the angle of the trailer to what I think I need to get into that spot. I think that should do it. Once again, it's doing the steering. My poor little brain isn't having to think about doing the steering in the opposite direction to moving the actual trailer. Here we go, come on. Oh, much easier. Look at that. That's it set up. Now all I have to do is press that button and make the trailer go straight back on that heading. And it should be pretty nicely parked, neatly in that spot. Done. 
One of the great things about having a big ass car is that you also have a big ass boot. In fact, the GLS's load capacity is class leading regardless of which configuration you have it in. So here it's in seven seat format and you have 355 litres of space there, which is about the same as you get in the boot of an A-Class. I'm going to show you how much stuff you can actually cram into it below the window line right now. Ah, not bad. Now let's try it in five seater mode. To fold the seats down, I just press these buttons here. So this is the bit where I demonstrate the boot, um, but the seats are playing up. I actually had a similar problem with the GLE when I had it, with its middle road. Um, yeah. So the guys have managed to get it working again. Uh, they think that the, the battery was having a bit of a problem, so it's sort of fixed itself and is working. So I'm going to try to continue with the demonstration. Right, so there you go, lots of luggage. Now I'm gonna show you how much stuff you can get in it with all the seats folded down. Right, all I have to do is fold the rest of the seats down. It should happen automatically. Please stay with the video. You're probably getting really bored of this. And there we go, look. So now we have 2,400 litres of space, which in case you're wondering is the same amount of air volume as is in all these basketballs. Okay, so I guess I should appraise this car dynamically. Um, it's a bit hard to here in the States because every road is straight. What I can tell you though, is that this car is super comfy over bumps. In that way, it is like the S-Class of SUVs. In fact, I don't think I've been in a comfier SUV than this car. To be fair though, most people driving this car will be cruising along the motorway. And it does go round corners as well as you need an SUV to. Actually, if you have that e-active body control, it does that thing where it will tilt the car into the corner, a little bit like a motorcycle to make it feel even more sporty. Although I don't know how sporty a big thing like this is ever going to feel. In terms of engines, well, I'm driving a 4 litre twin turbo V8. It has 490 horsepower, but it's also supplemented by an electric motor, which when you put your foot down will give you an extra 22 horsepower boost. You can also get a straight 63 litre petrol engine with 370 horsepower. That also has the electric motor boost function as well. There's two diesels, a 350 and a 400D, both are three litre straight sixes, one with 290 horsepower, the other with 330, and that's the one we'll get in the UK. Now, I should really be driving that diesel because we're not going to get this V8, but do you know what? I didn't want it. I wanted V8 power, and why not? Yeah, much better than a diesel. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Mercedes GLS? Is it really the S-Class of SUVs? And in terms of interior quality, no, it's not quite. But in every other aspect, yes, it is. So it's very spacious, it's super comfy to travel in, and it's packed full of groundbreaking technology, which is exactly what you expect from a flagship Mercedes. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.